Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Fuel Devotionals. My name is Pastor Dustin. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Have you read your Bible today? I hope you have. We've been reading in the book of James, one of my favorite books in all the Bible, just because it's so practical and helpful. And this is really about a book of maturity, how to be a mature Christian and how to test yourself and what level of maturity you find in your life. And so today we're talking about something that is extremely mature, something that's not easy to do, something that really even the best Christians, if you will, the most seasoned Christians struggle with, and that's this area of condemning brethren, condemning others. Be careful what you say about your brother and what you say and how you say could get you into trouble with the Lord. And we've been talking about this over the last two videos. Today we're going to conclude it with some thoughts. But just out of sake of review, we saw the precept that was given in verse number 11 of chapter 4, where it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. Just straight and simple. We can't be speaking evil of each other. We can't be cursing each other. We can't be uh, vilifying each other, condemning each other. Uh, or putting each other's names in the mud because we're a family. And he gives us the purpose of why we shouldn't do this. And the purpose is, also in verse 11, He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. You can't be judging your brother, is one reason. You can't be speaking evil of the law is the second reason. You can't be judging the law, and you can't be making yourself a judge. And James is kind of simply saying, who do you think you are when you speak evil of a brother or a sister in Christ? Who do you think you are? This is maturity. Today I'd just like to wrap this up with a couple concluding thoughts and what I call really the problem. We've seen the precept, the purpose, and here's the problem in verse number 12. It says, There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that thou judgest another? The problem is that God is the lawgiver and God is the judge. Not me. I'm not the judge of every man. I'm not the lawgiver. I didn't write the Bible. I didn't make the rules. I am under the law, just like my brother is under the law, and we are on equal footing. And just because he's struggling and I may not be at the moment doesn't mean I get to act like I am the lawgiver or the judge. God gave the law to every man, and the, and the law was given to aid every man in our relationships with each other. Okay? So we got to be careful what we say. Every individual is personally responsible for their own actions and decisions. If there is a brother that's struggling, and maybe they're doing something uh, that is definitely against the Bible, and many people know it, it, that is on them. Okay, That is between them and the Lord. They're breaking the law, and God will deal with it, and they will be responsible for their actions. I cannot control them. I cannot change them unless God helps me to do so. But the only thing I can do is take care of myself. And one of the good things I can do is pray for that brother instead of throwing him in the mud and speaking evil of him. God is responsible to condemn and to punish those that break the law. And Isaiah 33, 22 says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, and he will save us. And so, the, really, the problem is that this is God's problem, not my problem. And I don't need to uh, take up God's mantle as lawgiver and judge. And, and that really gets us to our second point that I want to conclude with. We are not God. I'm not the Lord. I can't see into a person's heart. I can't change things. I can't save anybody. Again, I didn't write the Bible. I didn't, I didn't in, in make all these things up. And so I am not God. And we have to be careful because when we start condemning other people, we're kind of putting ourselves in God's shoes saying that, well, I'm, I'm smart enough and I'm wise enough and I'm good enough to, to condemn this person. No, you're not. You're never not. You're never not. And remember, and remember, uh, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would be in the shoes of that person who you are looking down on. Don't do that. 
Don't do that. You are not God. Beware of becoming God in someone's life. You may be a parent, but that doesn't make you God. You may be a husband, but that doesn't make you God. You may be a wife, but that doesn't make you God. You may be a really, really good friend, but that doesn't make you God in somebody else's life. Remember that. And beware of the wrong kind of discernment. We need to make sure that we are discerning things biblically, not based upon what we are seeing, because we don't always know all the details behind the scenes. We don't always know all the problems that are going on in somebody's life. We don't know how close they are to changing. We don't know how bad they want it. We don't know where they've been and what they've tried to do and maybe have failed at and we're so close. Beware, because you don't know all the facts. And remember, we are all a family, and we're all in this battle together. When you look down at somebody at your church, or you condemn somebody at their church, can I remind you, you're going to spend all of eternity with that person. And one day, you may go up to heaven and you say, boy, I sure was wrong. Let's get it right now before we get to heaven. Because we are a family. We need to look out for each other. We need to love one another. As Jesus said, in John chapter 14, 15, 16, we got to love one another. This is how every man, every man knows that, uh, that God is real, that we love one another. This is the new commandment. And so one of the ways that we show that we love somebody is not by condemning them or speaking evil of them. Rather, pray for them, love them, serve them, watch out for them. That's where we need to be. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.